Magic Ritual 101 Appendix 1 Tools of the Craft To begin a proper study of the individual and specific tools for working the practical craft of magic, as described in the grimoires, we first examine the temple, or the working space. We may assume it to be a room comprised of a floor surrounded by walls supporting a ceiling, or we may assume it to be an open glade in the middle of a deep wood on a full moon. But in truth, the temple merely symbolizes a primal, genetically built-in, and evolutionarily hardwired anagram of neuron activity firing off electrochemical cascades inside our frontal lobes. In short, the temple of magic is the same as the memory castle I have described in my formal system of reasoning, at least to the extent it represents an invisible, archetypal arc, arcing all around us like our own aura, upon and within which we may store and retrieve any and all forms of information, an Akashic record with infinite access. The temple's personality being entirely a reflection of our own preferences, it may be of any size, shape, dimension, or degree we decide for it. The use of the temple is to abolish the differentiation at the layer of our spinal stem of an interior and exterior environment. In essence, if our soul is a glass house, it is best not to throw stones. Often it is said, the body is a temple, treat it like one, by those metaphysicians who would heal thyself. However, the truth to the temple is that there is no temple. It is an invisible, intangible, imaginary, superimposed mental projection over top of our sensory perception of visible and tangible reality. The general shape of the temple in working practical craft magic is symbolic of the microcosm within and reflecting the whole of the macrocosm. Crowley renamed these their original Egyptian names, Hadith and Nuit, respectively. They are symbolized as East and West because these are attributes of man, of the earth, and of our place in space and time. Beyond the rotation of the planet we are on, there are no such technical directions as East and West, because all directions of motions are relative to the location of one's point of view. Thus, the interior walls of the temple, or working space, symbolize the microcosm as East and West, where the East is depicted as a solar symbol, and the West is depicted by a lunar it is written among the monotheist scriptures that the first temple, built to the monotheist god, contained a holy of holies room, wherein was stored the Ark of the Covenant, in which were the sacred tablets of testimony. The dimensions of the holy of holies room are based on the tabernacle chambers of the makeshift tent built to camp the Ark while the Mosaic Hebrews first entered their holy land and named it Israel. In the texts of the Grimoires of Magic, we find the dimensions of the Holy of Holies, or Inner Tabernacle, described as the Al-Madel, a square. It is worth noting to the ardent student that Although these might or might not be the exact hexagram design on the floor and barbarous names of evocation, written thereon, present in the Holy of Holies room. However, the use of them for any given student of practical magic is arbitrary, as will be shown next in the sections on the various stellations. As already mentioned, the stellation immediately within the walls of the temple on the floor beneath the magician's feet, may be of any arbitrary number of points. 
Ideally, each would be contained within the next higher number of star points, such that there would be an expanding, embedding outward, or shrinking toward within. The five-point pentagram is a symbol of humanity as a microcosm of God. The six-point hexagram is a symbol of God as a macrocosm of humankind. The preferred stellation to be used with theurgic or angelic evocation is the seven-point heptagram associated with the seven Olympic or planetary dignities and the days of the week. The preferred stellation to be used with goetic or demonic evocation is the eight-point octogram, which is simply two overlapping squares at 45-degree angles to one another. The heptagram is usually called the Sigillium Dei Emeth and appears in at least seven grimoires from between the middle 1400s to the 1800s. It remains in use among practicing theurgists to this day. The next layer or level within the stellation on the floor, within the temple walls, is the circle of the art. The circle of the art differs from the circle that may surround the stellations, which is itself only a symbol for the walls of the temple. Just as there are different stellations attributed to different layers or levels of evocation, from the microcosm to the macrocosm, to angelology, to demonology, and so forth, so are there different sorts of circles of the art. The circle of the art is meant to symbolize the magician's own aura and to protect them from all the external forces implied by the symbolic stellations and temple walls. As such, it is imagined to extend around the magus as a sphere, the equatorial circumference of which is the circle of the art. There are usually two sorts of circle of the art, one being for good invocation of a divine god form, the other for the sort of evocation of a lesser servitor into being. Concerning the triangle of summoning used in evocation, it should be considered as a place meant into which to summon some form of otherwise invisible and intangible sentient intelligence. If you try to do this immediately, you will undoubtedly fail and meet with frustration. There are several Eastern Oriental schools on mystic meditation that instruct one on how to creatively visualize into shape and form in the mind's eye various beings embodying good and evil. Some practitioners of the art of scrying place a crystal ball or a grail of water instead of a triangle of summoning. Crowley breaks the meaning of the triangle of summoning down most concisely in his book four wherein he compares the three weapons of the magus as alike the three tattvas of Veda or to the three essential elements of alchemy. The triangle of summoning is outside the circle of the art, between it and the wall of the temple. The next tool of practical magical craft inside the magician's circle is the double cubit, hypercubic, altar representing the Kabbalistic diagram of the Tree of Life. There are twelve vertical edges exposed, symbolizing the twelve signs of the zodiac. There are seven faces of the twin cubes combined, four sides, a top, a bottom, and a middle, and these symbolize the seven Olympic or planetary dignities, the three mother letter elements are expressed as the three layers or levels of horizontal faces. The top surface of the altar serves as a layman containing sigils for scrying using a crystal ball. 
the secret seal of King Solomon from the Goetic Shemham Farash, or lesser key, works as a sufficient symbol for the upper surface of the altar. If one reads the sigils around the outer circle of this seal clockwise from topmost, it forms a familiar anagram of F and AM. H, T, W, S, S, T, K, S. Lastly, we will examine the tools the Magus works with using their hands. However, before we can apprehend these, we must first pause to consider the phylactery tephilim, which are mentioned twice in Exodus and twice in Deuteronomy, in the monotheist scriptures of Hebrew Tanakh. These are leather arm-wrapping straps upon which are written specific signs or totifot. The reason these are leather is to protect the hands from handling the Ark of the Covenant, and they were worn by the Zadokite Kohanim. The sigils themselves are shown to us in the sixth and seventh books of Moses' grimoire. The next tool of the practical craft of magic we must consider is the brass vessel containing the chrism, or holy oil of anointing. As mentioned in the section on the terms of practical tools of craft magic, the chrism is made of several essential oils, including hash oil, rendered from the marijuana plant. That the marijuana plant was cultivated in the Middle East during biblical times is testified to by both the mystic and the scholastic students of the Torah and of Kabbalah. The initial mention of the brass vessel used to hold the chrism is in the Goetic Shemham Farash of King Solomon, and the circumference of the brass vessel is inscribed with the letters in Hebrew from the Shemham Farash passage of Exodus, in which Moses parts the Red Sea. The holy oil is meant to be sprinkled about the working space to enhance the scent of incense or candles burned in the temples of practical ritual magic. The crystal ball of Johann Trithemius became the basis for the Rosicrucian order founded by John Dee, who used both Trithemius's scrying method and his codes. The athame, the only true form of magical weapon, was originally only used in bloodletting sacrifices, as described in the introduction. However, has since become merely symbolic of the same essential force as the Magus wand, but a stronger metal.